there's nothing better than having a sporty Audi on a summer's day. Not that you can tell. Mind you, it doesn't detract from the A1 Sportback. And it certainly makes a statement in Python yellow and mythic black. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. When the A1 first launched, it was a brand new line for Audi, and it was far smaller than their previous cars. I mean, it essentially took an A3 and shrunk it, and that was back in 2010. But this is the new kid on the block, the A1 Sportback. Now I say new kid, it's actually been out since 2018. And the sad fact is, it's not likely to be ever renewed. Because let's face it, everything's going EV. Which means, instead of this being on the MQB AO platform, the next one is likely to be on MEB, which is sad because this is a fantastic car. It delivers across the board, everything from the handling to the economy, high 50s, even I get 50. It's certainly a statement. Now when this launched, there was actually a two litre four cylinder and that pulled north to 16.64. Whereas this is closer to 10.6, but we've got a one litre turbocharged three cylinder. Now you've likely seen the Audi have renumbered their vehicles. So in this, you can get a 25, a 30, a 35, but the 40 is sadly gone. And that basically equates to one liter up to 1.5, neither three cylinders or four cylinders. And when you look deeper into development, it's, it's rather clever. For example, this doesn't need a balancing rod. There's no diesels and there's no EV or hybridity across any of the range. So they're all pure petrols, which is a rather good thing. We have a six-speed manual and an old-school handbrake. Yeah, you don't need to go for that. You could go for S-Tronic. But to be honest, it's nice to have a manual again. Now there's three trims to choose from. Sport, S-Line and Black Edition. This is an S-Line and falls around 27,000, but that's with various packages added. Now, if you want to go for a Black Edition, top of the range, well, you're going to be closer to 35. The thing is, you can pick an A1 Sport back up for just under £23,000. Now that seems remarkably good value. Now it's certainly changed since 2010. I mean the overall styling, you can still see A1, but it's much more dynamic, modern. You can see new design language. And things like the vents, which pay homage to UR Quattro and the like. To be honest, Sportback is actually roomier than the first gen, which it's kind of surprising, but not. Because when you normally go for a sport back, you lose things like headroom. Whereas with this, it's actually increased. Now, when you start to look at the bare bones, you'll realize they've developed this a fair bit more. You can actually tell. For example, the wide track, the shorter overhangs, it gives it a torty sportiness. There's no quattro, however, you can get the optional drive select, allowing you to change characteristics of the car. You can also get various suspension setups, including adjustable dampers. The other thing is, it's a longer wheelbase. When you take a deeper look, you'll notice well, there's some design cues you might recognize of previous Audi Sport models, especially Sport Quattro. And I'm talking about this. That's one heck of a car. And I think it released in the 80s. If you want one of those, that'll cost you about 1.2 million. And of course, the synonymous one-piece Audi grille with the silver four rings. Auto Union, anyone? And in black with a silver trim. Now, depending on which model you go for, this may be a different colour. Also, on S-Line, this is all flared and you get the bigger vents, the satin lip, the black A-pillars, the black contrasting roof and the way that the headlamps curve. If you want to stand out in the crowd, this is what you want. Or you could just go black edition. What do you think of the A1 Sportback? Oh, I like it too. You've got lots of safety on this. AEB, ultrasonic sensors, pedestrian and bicycle detection, mitigation systems, automatic LED lights, high beam assist, and sequential indicators. Also, you've got front parking sensors. No front parking camera though. It's not quite as advanced as say a Q4, but it's pretty good considering it's a small car. You get a decent level of equipment across the full range. It's also NCAP 5 and you get a three year warranty. Chopped arches. I do like sharp angles. 
They give it definition. Wheels. Well, anything from 15s to 18s, depending on which trim you choose. The colour, well, you're either going to love it or hate it. Annabelle and myself, we love it. No surprise there. From the side, you can see it toes forward naturally. It also looks like it's in motion, especially with that rear quarter. If you want to stand out more so, you can tailor the side skirts and the mirror caps to be the same colour as the roof. The A1 can really carry off the five door configuration. Well, it looks in proportion and it's got some really nice lines. The one thing I might change on this is black wheels. I think that would really make it. Let's take a look inside. So no keyless entry, but we do have power folding door mirrors with blind spot detection. Door opens nice and wide and it's kind of what you expect with a small car. So hard plastics at the top of the door but you do have a padded area here. Decent door pocket, and I can see we've got the Sonos sound system. Climbing in, oh, looks to be child's play. Even at six foot three, just isn't a challenge. But that's what I read about this vehicle. It will suit four over six foot adults. I'm comfortable, I've got a great driving position. No flat bottom steering wheel. Now that is a surprise. S-line emblem here, and I can see that I've got a virtual cockpit. Your rev counter on the left, and your speedo on the right. You've got a little fuel computer in the middle. Very cool. Great to see rotaries. Now on this side, simple buttons. The shaping round here, it's rather futuristic. It's got like a dynamic look. And what's this? A key, and I actually need to use it to start the engine. No push button starts here. And there you have it, the inimitable Audi clunk. That's it. These have been known for construction that's above and beyond for many years. I mean, yeah, the car wobbles. Everything just feels well, good. Interesting materials, soft touches, hard plastics, but of a decent quality. Proper buttons, rotaries. That's it. Nothing's weak. It just feels grr, arg. That's it. When you buy an Audi, you get something that's pretty solid. Love it. Just like baby Q4. Space age, dynamic, interesting finishes. Even things like the vents. With just three fins, it means they're not dust traps. Not the biggest infotainment screen, but it's integrated, well, perfectly. Just look at the way the dash flows and it's angled towards you as well. It means that you feel encompassed in the vehicle, which is exactly the kind of thing I look for in a sporty little warm hatch. Lots of storage points and a proper rotary for turning up the volume on your stereo. You can also use it to go track forward or change your radio station. 12 volts, USBs, and the air care system. You have your rotaries, but you will see the actual display change in the infotainment screen, which makes perfect sense. It would kind of be overkill to put digital readings on here. It's really nice to see a six speed manual and it's a solid box, old school handbrake with hill start assist. Now, yes, yeah, solid plastics down here, but decent cup holders. And it is strange not to have an armrest, but yet again, it's a small car. So it's not the kind of thing you really see. Drive select, so that's where you change the driving mode. Now your infotainment system pretty much controls everything. So when you twist this, you'll see it display and you can change airflow, heat, etc. It's got Apple CarPlay, it's got Android Auto, DAB Radio, and you can set some of the car's settings. Look at that for response. Sonos. You can just get in this car and drive it. There's nothing you have to go, why do I do that? Even at six foot three, I've got decent leg room, I've got a foot rest here, and I can adjust the reach and the rake on the steering wheel. Comfortable buckety seats, and I love the fabric. This is leatherette. We've also got the silver stitching and S-line embossed at the top. And look, front Isofix points. Headroom. Well, first things first, the seat isn't actually on the floor. And I've still got, what's that, about two inch? And a grab handle on the driver's side. Auto dimming mirror. And you've got your map reading lights. Now, what I've noticed of late, especially with VWG cars, is the window line is quite high, but it provides more protection. It's just a really nice small car. Let's take a look in the back. From this rear quarter, you can see the overemphasized rear haunches. 
which emphasizes the sportiness, especially with that sloping roof line. And it'd be interesting to see if that affects headroom. Disc brakes all round with the front vented. Let's take a look in the rear. The door opens nice and wide and it's a decent opening. Once again, hard plastics. And sadly, even a padded armrest. Decent door pocket and you've got an electric window. Now, my knees are pushing on this, but this is set at a lavish six foot three. And I can get my feet under the seat. To be honest, if I put my seat forward, maybe say an inch, I'd have decent leg room. So let's try that. That's one thing to note actually, manual seats. So I'll bring it forward to say there. Now I can still drive at that quite easily. Let's try again. You know, that extra bit of room just allows for this recess to help my knees. So decent headroom and leg room. It really says something for a car of this size. I'm not hunched up. I'm not sat slumped. I'm just sat naturally. I'm not even brushing. And that's at six foot three. It's a TARDIS, I tell you. More comfortable buckety seats, Isofix points. And I do like this fabric. That's the other thing about Audi. The back seat experience is very similar to the front. It's nice to see continuity. Now that is a fair transmission tunnel, but it makes sense because it's on MQB AO. I've got decent leg room. I'm not too upright and they're very comfortable. Nice, they're not plush seats per se, but they've got, just look at that. And I can now speak from experience that you'd get well, essentially four of me in this car. And I never thought that would be the case. I also thought it'd be quite dark in here because there's no window, say, here. But the back windows, well, it's pretty big. It's well configured. But one thing that is a letdown, no grab handles on either side in the back. That seems a strange omission. But you do have a centre interior light and a little map reading. No charge points, but you have got a little storage pot. Airbags around the vehicle, coat hook here. And you can adjust the drivers and passenger seat belts. Let's take a look at the back. The rear is a thing of beauty. It's got great design lines. The styling, rear diffuser styling. And you've got the satin finish around the rear lip. Vents, yes, they're not active, but they look the part. LED rear lenses with sequential indicators and just clear, simple badging. Just tastefully done. Sporty rear spoiler with, yet again, homage to Audi Sport with the lifted sections here. Sharp fin aerial and a rear wiper. And finally, we've got rear parking sensors and a reversing camera, but that does depend on trim. Let's take a look in the boot. It's a decent sized boot for this size of car. With very little boot lip. You quite easily get, say, a couple of weeks shopping in there. Two medium sized suitcases. So you could go on a small jaunt. That's the other thing about this car. It's not just a runaround for cities. You could quite easily go on a three or 400 mile journey. Cargo net, shopping bag hooks, and tethering points that are anchored to the body. There's also a little light here. False floor, we've got a subwoofer. You can see you can actually drop it and that'll increase your boot space. Thing is, it will also increase your boot lip. One thing that really appeals is the angle that the boot goes to. Even at my height, I don't catch my head. Nice and easy to take the parcel shelf out. Just little loops. The other thing you notice about Audi cars is all this is trimmed. And it just makes it a little more refined experience. Less road noise, etc. Pop this out, you just slide out on these runners. That's a novel way to remove the parcel shelf. I bet that symbolizes whether the seat's locked in place or not. Nice little safety feature. To drop the seats, push this forward and Ta -da. They don't lock in place, but they do lay virtually flat. Very little gap here too. Probably get a mountain bike in the back of there, but you would have to remove the wheels. Another thing to note, if you've got the floor a little lower, then it won't be a flat loading area. Decent size though. Let's take a look under the bonnet. Good old petrol engine. To release, just pull this. Just push this lever left. 
good to see that anything that's important is highlighted in yellow. So you can see where to top up fluids, oil, brake fluid, etc. Not said that for a while. Shows you how many petrol cars we get on the channel now. The thing is, this is the kind of car that I cut my teeth on. So it's nice to see a turbocharger and ice, invariably. This is a lovely little car and it offers so much for the money. Yes, it may not be as cost effective as other smaller cars, but what you get, well, you'd be very happy with. Welcome behind the wheel of the Audi A1 Sportback. Under the bonnet, we've got a one litre, three cylinder turbocharged engine, and it is rather fun. It's quite quick. On paper, it's not to 60 in around 10 and a half seconds. I found it rather agile. <laughs> but it, it seems <laughs> far quicker. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Through the gears, because of the turbocharger, it performs well, but be aware, as it's got a turbo, if you go into the wrong gear at the wrong time, you may have an element of lag, but you know, that comes with the territory. But most of the time it's ready, it's spooling. It is, I mean, for example, Ooh. it's there. Yeah. Now due to its short overhangs Clear. and its wide Clear. track, it's nimble, agile. Chuckable. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckable. <laughs> Oh, sorry guys, I am trying to hold on, but Ben is having far too much fun. The interesting thing is, if you read up on some of the reviews, they say it's not really a driver's car. And, uh, well, I beg to differ, because it is. <laughs> it yeah, just I goes where you point it. Yeah. The other thing is, it's got electromechanical steering, so it's got real feeling great feedback and nice and direct it gets really good fuel economy like most of the time it's sat around 50 miles yeah i've managed to get it down to about 23. Oh God. that's not really surprising <laughs> no i was going to say and ledford ben what have you been getting but uh, there we go the thing is i've got audi select so why wouldn't i be in dynamic if you put it in efficiency you just drive it i suppose normally it's really, really good. Considering we've got 17 inch wheels, there's very little road noise, even on our knackered roads. And also, no wind noise to speak of. No, it's very refined in here, isn't it? Yeah, not surprising with Audi, to be honest. Even their smallest car offers levels of refinement you just don't find in well, no, this segment. Exactly, the quality's just built in, isn't it? No. The turbo's not bad at all, even in fourth gear, just pulls. Likelihood is, it'll be a small turbo, which means it won't have as much lag as, say, bigger turbos on, say, I don't know, an A4. Gearbox, lovely six-speed manual. Slick changes, no notchiness. And just a oh, great feel to it. Nice and solid. And yes, that is an old school handbrake. And you can have a lot of fun in this car. And it corners like it's on rails. As proven. Cluster. Nice and straightforward with virtual cockpit. So I've got the map, navigation, etc. in there. Operated with a little button here, and you can also change the view. But at a glance, you can see all the information you need your revs, your MPG, speed, safety, etc. Speaking of safety, AEB, ultrasonic sensors, pedestrian and bicycle detection pretty much everything it needs. Turning circle, well, yeah. exceptional. Look at that. The ride's rather comfortable, isn't it? Yeah, as driver or passenger. The thing is, it's no less nimble. It has, well, virtually no body roll. But at the other end of the scale, it's not like a raw ride, is it? No. It just... It's like the best of both. Yeah. And yes, you can get adaptive dampers. And that's it. If you couple together Audi Select, the engine, the handling and the steering, 
it's a great combo. A little bit of hesitation, but then 50. That's it, you've got both half of them bump. Great visibility. Yeah. Suspension's excellent. Handles superbly. Yeah. Great fuel economy. For a small family car, you can't really go wrong, can you? It still staggers me that you can get four six foot me's in it. Yeah. You know, Are you that, right? When we, were, when we were doing the review, you were saying it was TARDIS like, and it's true, it's sorcery. It you know what you're getting when you get an Audi, and you get what you pay for. You do. Baby Golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest though, it's probably a similar size to the Mark II. Yeah. One thing that does strike me is, even when you sat at, say, a junction, you get no unnecessary vibration, which is good for a three-cylinder. Forged pistons, aluminium where it can be used. The engine, the TFSI, it's a work of art, and it works exceptionally well. As we know, offering decent economy. I mean, I'm already up to 32.7. What was it under the crack? 23? Yes. And I'm hardly driving economically, I'm just driving normally. No, for a small family car, this has got a lot going for us now. Yeah, it has. And it'd be a shame to see it go, to be honest. The thing is, it's likely to be replaced with something on MEB. Maybe the new golf type thing, because that well the golf's gone hasn't it yeah. <laughs> sadly a bit of road noise on here but if it's you look a bad at, road I was gonna say look at the texture of that. yeah I mean it shows you how stiff it is through torsional rigidity by the fact that it ended up on three wheels on our forecourt look at this you can't unhinge it <laughs> that's what you want though you know if you do need to swerve at speed or on a roundabout, yeah. yeah. To know you need you to know do. you can do it. Yeah. Would we go for the bigger engine? Probably not. This I'd offers say enough. No, yeah. no, this is it's perfect, isn't it? 